All right, guys, welcome to part three for Camper 8.0 build. And as you guys can see uh, in the last week or so since my last video, the camper has really taken shape. Now, this is wide angle, so it looks a little expanded. Uh, but I think you guys can see the most striking feature, which is this curve in the roof. Now, there is some minor design changes uh, that I have uh, incorporated since the last video, which I'll talk about in a moment. Um, I am really liking this design and how it's looking. And the genesis of this idea, or the reality of being able to execute it so far, comes down to this long piece of hardwood here. Um, to be honest, I don't know for sure, but I believe it's maple. Uh, there's a lumber store that's local to me um, that I I don't go there, frankly, even a lot, but I go there mostly try to buy my plywood and I'll buy hardwood there. And um, there's a forklift driver uh, at the time that I befriended, um, kind of a uh, classic redneck fellow from uh, somewhere in the south. Um, uh, I don't usually carry cash on me, so whenever he would drop, you know, take his forklift over and give me the plywood, I would usually pay him with beers out of the back of my camper. And, uh, this is probably six to nine months ago. I went in there and they had this big, it was about 118 inch long beam of hardwood. And, uh, this fellow, uh, said that, uh, uh, they had to get rid of it because it was overstock and they needed space in the warehouse or whatever, and he gave it to me. And again, this is some great big 120 inch, about this this big around beam. I mean, it was heavy. It probably was 80 pounds or something. It was hard to carry around. And I obviously I kept it and I stored it in the garage not knowing what I was gonna do with it. And then when I went to start this build, um, having, I love, the organics of a curve, arc, arch, whatever you want to call it. Um, and executing that, at least for me, is harder than you would think it would be, at least in my experience. And I had the idea and I remembered that big long beam. So I actually pulled it out and ripped three of these. As you guys can see, this is not even permanently fixed. This is just a mock-up right now. Uh, but I ripped three of these at half inch thick and they will arc across the roof here, as I'm sure you guys can kind of figure in the middle and then on the other side. And the roof surface will lay over the top of this. Uh, as I talked about before, this will be a cedar plank design. You guys can already see some of the cedar planking taking shape in the bottom tub. And of course, these side walls will mimic this arc in this shape. I frankly think it's beautiful. Um, so let's talk about some of the design changes that I had to incorporate since my last video. Um, as you guys recall, I'm, this is going to be a compact micro camper. And one of the things I'm trying to do is to conceal m the most amount of camper I can behind the back of the truck. Now, having a cab over probably seems contrary to that, and, and to some extent it is. Later, there's, uh, I have a, a theory that I'm going to play into play where I think the cab over could actually have an aerodynamic benefit. It's theoretical. It's probably wrong, but I'll talk about that in later episodes. Um, but the cab over also served an important role as far as um, balance or proportionality in design. I knew I wanted this arc, and if I made it just a non-cab over camper, I could still have the arc, but I felt that it would be a little bit compact and less useful. I think putting in the cab over, at least in my experience, is kind of makes these truck campers seem a little bit proportional. Now, of course, this is a mini cab over. This is only about 30 inches long. Um, but what I had to do, the design change is I originally wanted the sidewalls to angle inwards, um, mirroring or roughly mirroring the angle of the cab of the pickup truck. Let me show you um, over here at a different angle.
So that means that right here, all of this would have shifted inwards. Now, as I'm sure many of you guys could see, I've visualized and kind of built this camper multiple times in my head in different configurations. Adding in this arc, if you have curved walls, would require, uh, you know, because on the shorter ends, the arc is not going to go as high, so you'd either have to bend it in more, uh, or, you, or the roof surface itself would have to be wider. Um, ultimately, in the end, it was a very tough call for me, but, but I decided that I'm just going to have vertical side walls, um, which provides a much more consistent wall surface for marrying up to this arc, which for me was my primary design consideration. Uh, in the end, I think it's going to be fine. Now, this by far is the narrowest camper I've made. This is uh, will have an overall width of only 72 inches, which means it will just come right to the top edge or the top lip of the top of my bed rail there. And, uh, um, and I'm fine with that. It, the This theoretical aerodynamic feature I'm going to include um, that's actually going to have a benefit and role. And again, I apologize, but I'll talk about that later. It'll make much more sense. Um, but here it is, guys. Uh, the cab over, uh, I've done this in the last couple builds, is I've made it modular, meaning I made it, uh, uh, I made it by itself, and then I installed it into this camper body. It's the camper body. Uh, in a lot of my earlier campers, I'd kind of build out the cab over onto the body, but if I found it was easier just to build it and then bolt it on. Of course, there's a lot of other stuff that you attach, but I got this done recently. Again, like I said, this is just a mock-up. Um, let me take the camera here and show you guys a couple things. Okay, so when this arc is locked in in the back, and then, or in the back there, and then in the front here, the arc, this arc will actually, you know, function well as an arch, right? Because it will, it, it's, it's bent right here. It's under tension. And once I lock it in, it won't push down. But in the tensioning process, uh, it is putting a fair amount of tension across all of these. And I wanted to have it where it had a nice support. So what I did is I just leveled the height of all these columns where I approximated it would be. But obviously there's some adjustment that needs to be done once you actually finally bend the arc over the camper. So I just created little features like this. So for example, this one, I put the height of this to be here. And then I realized as I got building that I needed to stack it up a little bit higher and that was fine. I did that. Um, so this little feature here, you can see this is put on the side and I lifted it up a little bit. Some of these things you can't calculate. You just have to do as you go. Uh, this one right here, same thing. This piece right here went on after I raised it up a little bit. It looks messy, but in the end, it won't really matter. Um, uh, of course, what I did on these beams going across, these are only two inches thick. Okay, uh, this one is a, a little bit thicker just because I had to make an adjustment there. And of course, this one is a little bit thicker, but that won't matter because that's a feature for the inside. Um, I was able, because of this theoretical uh, uh, extra strength that this arch will provide across the roof, I was able to actually narrow up those, sorry, it's a piece of glue in my thumb there. I was able to narrow up the width of these beams. Now, this is a little bit theoretical, but like I said, once I lock in the back and the front, this thing, because it's under tension, should be rock solid. So it, so I'm taking a chance, but I'm going to minimize those beams. It's going to cut weight, but it's also going to give me uh, more interior space, which will be a premium on this one because it's a little bit of a lower profile, shorter camper. Um, if If my calculations are in error and I feel like it needs more strength, I can always fix it because I can just laminate more boards going across. But I think it's going to work out fine. Um, a lot of these designs on novel builds, because keep in mind, guys, this is I've never built something exactly like this, is I try to imagine the problems that I have and solutions that I can have to kind of figure them out. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, this is where we're at. Um, 
the superstructure goes up pretty quick. I have been working really hard though. I've been working eight, 10 hours a day, um, uh, trying to get this done. Uh, but I gotta say, um, I think it's, uh, I think it's a really sexy design. Um, I think it's gonna look really good. And uh, the front end here, just as a little context, uh, uh, this kind of, this 45 degree bull nose, the, the, this long part in the front here up to this angle change is the exact width of the top of the pickup truck. So you guys can kind of get a sense for the natural angling in of the cab of the pickup. Uh, you know, this is, uh, if I recall, that was six inches from here to here or somewhere in that neighborhood uh, of how much it will extend over the side of the pickup truck. Um, but overall, uh, this will still have an extremely small profile. So um, let me just take a walk around here. I'll let you guys look at it from a couple different angles and I will shut my mouth. Let me know what you guys think though. Uh, this is pretty exciting and uh, I think it's gonna look pretty good. I do have one other comment, but let me just rotate around here. Let you guys get a couple different angles. Let's, let's go back into standard mode there. As you guys would imagine, using all the uh, mortise and tenon style uh, joint technique, which I've tried to incorporate as much as I can throughout this entire frame, uh, this thing is incredibly strong as it sits right now. And when I get that cedar skin on it, it will almost functions as I like to call it, like an exoskeleton. This thing will be rock solid. Uh, one other thing <clears throat> I wanted to mention was, and this really was a true benefit of doing that mock-up. What I meant by that is before I had the superstructure framing built, which you guys see here, I actually slid the truck camper back into the pickup truck. And this kind of comes back into the idea of the design changes. One thing that struck me, which I didn't like, was the rear end of this sat really high. Now that has, of course, advantages. It gives you more internal space and a larger door. Um, but proportionally, that, that concept that we're talking about when it comes to design, I found that it, uh, it just looked odd and, and it wasn't what I was looking for. So I shrunk down that rear end a little less tall. Uh, it is almost, the rear end is almost the exact height of the front wall that leads into the cab over. I think the rear end is just a little, I don't remember, one or one or the other is only about an inch taller. I don't remember which way it was. Um, but from a por proportionality sense, um, I think it was necessary, and I'm glad I did. It, I think it's going to give this a really good look. So thanks, guys, for watching. I'll catch up here as I get a little bit more progress done. Thanks.